Hello, B here, and welcome back to Biology. Think back to all of the animals we have discussed so far in this unit. Now, I want you to picture a dog, a cat, and a gorilla. What is the first difference you notice that dogs, cats, and gorillas have, but all of the other animals lack? Fur. The presence of fur or hair is an important feature that is only present in mammals. Mammals, or animals in class mammalia, are the topic of today's lesson. Class mammalia is a relatively small group of organisms in kingdom animalia, with around 5,100 species. This is about half the number of species of birds, and one-fifth the number of fish species. Within this small group, though, there is a wide range of animals ranging from the massive blue whales and elephants to the teeny tiny shrew mouse. Mammals are also the animals most affected by human activities, including domestication, food, clothing, and hunting. But before we get started, let's look at our goals for this lesson. By the end, you'll be able to identify the characteristics that distinguish mammals from other organisms, distinguish between the three main categories of mammals, and compare their reproductive methods. The animals that make up class mammalia are a highly diverse group that can be found all over the world and in every type of habitat, from the frozen Arctic to the hot desert. Through evolution, these animals have been able to adapt to their specific environments. In this lesson, we will be discussing nine of these key characteristics that scientists use to identify organisms as mammals. Are you cold? I am freezing. I really wish I had my favorite comfy, cozy wool sweater to put on. The next time you are cold and put on a wool sweater, thank a sheep for sharing their insulation. Mammals can often be identified by their hair or fur, which evolved from reptilian scales to act as insulation. You might be asking yourself, but what about whales and dolphins? They don't have fur or hair. And that is true. Adult whales and dolphins do not have hair or fur. However, when they are first born, both of these animals have a small amount of hair near their nose and by the whale's blowhole. Ever wonder why dogs pant? Or why we sweat more after a workout in the summer than in the winter? Panting and sweating is one way mammals cool themselves off when they are hot. Mammals are endothermic, meaning they regulate their own body temperature. So they need a way to cool their bodies down when they are hot and warm their bodies up when they are cold in order to achieve homeostasis. Homeostasis means a state of balance, which in this case means that they won't overheat. This ability to regulate their own body temperature is done through feedback loops and is another way mammals have adapted to be able to live in the Arctic. Let's shift gears a little and talk about reproduction. A key characteristic for almost all mammals is that mothers give birth to live young and then nourish their young by secreting milk from mammary glands until the young can find food on their own. Have you ever played tag or ran after your dog? Do you remember how your heart rate felt when you stopped? Most likely your heart was beating faster than usual so that your body could send more oxygenated blood to your cells, strengthen your heart, and improve your endurance. Mammals have a closed double loop circulatory system with a four chambered heart. The four-chambered heart is what ensures a good supply of oxygen and supports your metabolism, whether you are active or resting. Okay, I want you to try something for me. I want you to pause the video, close your eyes, and take a long, deep breath in and a slow, long exhale out. Go ahead, I'll wait. 
What did you notice about your chest on the inhale and on the exhale? You should have noticed that as you took a long inhale, your chest expanded, and as you slowly exhaled, your chest relaxed. This ability to take deep breaths is because of the presence of your diaphragm. The diaphragm is a sheet of muscle located beneath the lungs and is present only in mammals. It contracts and expands the chest cavity in order to create a vacuum that sucks air into the lungs. Do you remember the excitement of losing a baby tooth? Or the relief when a super wiggly tooth finally came out? But you wouldn't feel the same way if you lost an adult tooth though, because then you would be missing a tooth because humans only get two sets of teeth, baby or milk teeth and permanent teeth. This is unique to mammals. Most vertebrates continuously lose and replace teeth throughout their lives. That's why people are able to find shark teeth on the beach. However, the type of permanent teeth a mammal has depends on their diet. If a mammal is an herbivore or eats only plant material, their teeth tend to be flat so they can grind their food and break down the cellulose of plant walls. Carnivores or meat-eating mammals have sharp and piercing teeth. Now, rub your tongue along your teeth. What do you notice? Omnivores, like humans who eat a mix of plants and animals, have both types of teeth. Hear that? That is the sound of dolphins talking to each other. Mammals have evolved to use language to communicate. This is due to their complex nervous system and highly developed brains. Chimpanzees can be taught sign language. Elephants make a vibration sound that is such a low frequency that humans are unable to hear it. And humpback whales sing. There are approximately 26 orders in class mammalia, so scientists have broken the class into three main groups based on how they reproduce. Monotremes, which consist of the duck-billed platypus, and echidna are the only mammals to reproduce by laying eggs. Marsupials, such as kangaroos and opossums, have a short gestation period or time spent in the womb, then spend the rest of their growing time in a pouch outside the mother's body. When they are growing in the pouch, they are developing and receiving nourishment from mammary glands. The last group is the largest, placental mammals. These are mammals that grow inside the female with the help of the placenta. The placenta is an organ that provides food and oxygen while removing waste from the young growing in the womb inside the mother's body. There are 18 orders that fall under this category, but some examples of these animals are bats, monkeys, squirrels, rabbits, humans, walruses, elephants, and horses. As we went through the lesson today, we learned the key characteristics of mammals and identified important anatomical differences that set the animals in class mammalia apart from the rest of kingdom animalia. You will be learning a lot more about mammals in our next unit on the human body systems. Next time, you'll have the chance to review what we have learned in Unit 8, Animal Kingdom, and demonstrate your knowledge in a unit assessment. Until next time, remember that biology isn't just science, it's the way of life. Hey, hey.